Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. So I've just laid out all of my ruffles, as best as I can, <laughs> um, and I don't have enough to cover the whole area of the base of the train ruffle. So what I've done is gotten out my two other strips of fabric which I um, already hemmed. Uh, I haven't put in any gathering stitches in these. But these are both those uh, more sturdy, stiff cotton fabrics. This one's the broadcloth, and then this one is the bed sheet. So this one is a lot softer, but not as soft as um, the poly poplin fabric. Um, yeah, and I don't have enough ruffles. And I don't think that this will provide enough of, like, this will provide enough ruffles to cover this middle section and then those side parts. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm thinking of doing is those parts there of the poly poplin fabric, which extends past where I need it to go, I'm thinking of chopping those parts off and then using them to cover those little little sections on the ends there and then that pink ruffle I'm thinking of bringing that down a bit so basically if I pull this down and this actually starts a bit further down then I could put buttons up here and this part this part actually goes quite far up on the train so it would go up to where those pins are so that part's not actually touching the ground, so it's not like it needs any ruffles or anything to give it structure, because it's not touching the ground. So I'm fine for this pink ruffle to shift further down, and then that would mean that this empty area uh, doesn't have, well, it, it will be less of a surface area to cover. And then I'm hoping that whatever I can get in terms of rufflage out of this um, out of these strips of fabric, um, they will be enough to cover that middle part. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to leave it there for tonight because, man, that doing these ruffles took a long time. I think I've worked on this for about, I started at three o'clock, it's now a quarter past six. So I'm going to have dinner. Um, I'd, I'd only started at three o'clock today because I had um, had a friend gathering picnic thing, um, like a brunch thing. So that's what took up most of my day today. Um, yeah, but I did want to work on this, uh, at least a bit of it this afternoon. And I'm actually glad that I finally got all the ruffles ironed down because I was dreading that part so much and I'm so glad that it's done. Um, I'm dreading this part now because I need to sew in the gathering stitches, I need to gather the fabric and then I need to iron it down. At least it's not as much as what I had to do here um, but it is still quite a long process to do that with. So that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. Um, yeah and we'll see if I end up working on this throughout the week or most likely um, this will wait until next weekend. So yeah, that's the progress of the train ruffle. And there's the, there's the sad looking train on the dress form. 
I'm still waiting for the horsehair crinoline to come through um, so I can uh, hem the, the base of the skirt. But the other thing I realise is that I don't actually have any fabric left over. Actually, no, I do. I do have some fabric left over from the poly poplin fabric to use as um, facing for the bottom of the skirt. Um, but I'll worry about that later. But yeah, I, I mean, this is coming together, but very slowly. <laughs> it's really a beast of a project. Anyway, that's it. I'll leave it there for now and I'll catch you in the next video or the next clip, depending on how I edit this. <laughs> See ya. So it's three o'clock on the 30th of May and I've been procrastinating all day, so I haven't actually touched this. Um, this has just been lying on my floor since last weekend. So yeah, I need to actually do stuff on it now. So um, what I am planning on doing, I think I explained this last time, is if I just come over to the sewing room, I've got the cotton broadcloth and the bed sheet um, strips of fabric. Oh, they're all wrinkled now. I probably should iron them. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put in gathering stitches in both of these strips. And then coming back to over here, I'm hoping that that will be enough to fill in this gap over here. And then that ruffle there is just going to be situated around there which is fine and I'm pretty happy with the placement of all of these ruffles down here. Um, for the parts that have a little bit extra, I'll probably just shift the little bit extra to the sides. And that should be all ruffles done and then it's just a matter of sewing all of the ruffles down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put in gathering stitches in those ones and then I'll be back. Uh, quickly, I just wanted to come on here and mention that with these pieces, I'm actually going to close off the edges. So at the moment, this is just one edge and it's raw. Um, and I'm going to finish off the edges by literally just folding in um, both sides and then doing a top stitch across to lock those raw edges down so they don't come up. Um, I have not yet done this for any of the ruffles currently on the base ruffle thing on the floor right now um, but I will need to do this for that um, for all of those ruffles so I'll probably get around to doing that when I go to sew each of the ruffles on the actual base piece um, but yeah just so you know this is what I'm doing to all of my pieces on the edges so there are no raw edges So that's one edge all nice and sewn down and as you can see there are no raw edges which is great. So I'm just going to repeat that for the other side and then for that piece as well and then I'm going to sew a gathering stitch all along the top edge. The top edge, this is a little bit different to the uh, poly poplin fabric. Um, the poly poplin fabric is all on the fold along this edge, whereas these ones have been pieced together because uh, these were scrap pieces of fabric and I needed to do whatever I could to piece them together to get long strips. Um, so yeah, there is actually a seam in there, um, but what I'm thinking of doing is not sewing on the seam, but sewing just a bit further down. So when I sew the gathering stitch, it will be just on the two layers of fabric rather than the four. So hopefully that will work out. We'll see, but I'm just going to do all of that off camera and yeah. So I'm in the middle of gathering the white cotton piece right now and I just wanted to mention that I actually watched a YouTube video this morning and they said that if you increase your stitch length to the longest and then the tension to the highest then that will actually gather your fabric um, I think it worked for them because they're using they were using a very lightweight fabric um, whereas I've got like two layers of stiff broadcloth material here so this is the stitch line that I get when having a high tension and a long stitch length um, but what I found is that it's actually easier to pull on the threads and gather it 
without, and I feel like there's less risk of the thread breaking um, with less, uh, with more tension on the thread. So yeah, I did it, I did the gathering stitching a little bit different to how I did the poplin fabric pieces, but I feel like this is probably the way that I would suggest doing it. Um, just because I feel like it's it's so much easier to gather the fabric this way. I feel like um, I had quite a lot of trouble, not a lot, but I find that gathering the fabric now is so much easier than when I did it with the poplin fabric. So I don't know if that's a fabric weight thing or um, the stitching, but yeah, I feel like the, the threads are a lot more um, just easier to pull. But yeah, I'm going to continue pulling on all of the top thread of this white piece and then I can go to the floor and figure out how these uh, will fit. <laughs> so I've just started ironing down on my gathering uh, to keep it nice and flat. So this is the same sort of process that I did with the poplin fabric, um, although this fabric is a little bit stiffer um, because it's it's a stiff fabric compared to the lightweight polypoplin fabric um, but it's the same process and I'm sort of almost like forming pleats at the same time especially at the lower edge um, so I'm fine if there are lots of folds in the fabric um, I just let that be and I iron over the top and then I press on the steamy thingy on my iron, the thing that makes steam and smoke come up. <laughs> and um, that really makes sure that that's nice, nicely pressed down. So yeah, that's basically all I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to continue doing that. Oh, this is so nice and warm. <laughs> it's so cold today. Anyway, um, yeah, I need to flatten out all of this so it's like that. So I've just been spending some time arranging the extra ruffles on the base fabric. So I've got the white one here, that was the additional um, pink one and I'm just sort of like filling in the gaps Hang on, let me put the camera down here so I'm just sort of filling in the gaps as best I can and then with these ones um, that like since they're filling in the gaps up here so like that will that white one will start around there and then this pink one will start just underneath the white one like that um, with a lot of these um, polypoplin fabric ruffles down here um, they don't actually need to extend up all the way up here because that's already going to have coverage from the white and pink fabrics so what I've done is just shifted this um, over um, so the end of it is aligned with the bottom of the white piece so there's the end and I'm just going to have to sew that up, um, that raw edge. So the end of it's just touching the bottom of the white piece. Now I'm not being too accurate with any of this because it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and I've just followed it along to this side and then I'm just going to match this up to the edge of the white piece on the opposite side. And then I'm just going to cut <laughs> just like this. And hopefully the excess, I don't know if you saw me cut that piece. I just cut here. So now there's that short ruffle that starts here and finishes here. And then I've got this excess. There we go. I've got this excess. So I'll probably use that um, for
for those parts over here. Um, I still need to trim down this length of ruffle because this is way too long and it extends like all the way up there past past the where I want it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly do that. So I'm happy with that ruffle. And then this ruffle, probably just want to shift it down a bit. I'm going to shift it down to about there and then just bring the rest of this over. And like I said, I'm not being too particular with measurements or anything like that. So I'm going to end this one about, about here. Let me lift the camera up so you can see. So I've just brought that piece down and so it's coming around and I'm probably going to end it. Hmm. I'd say like about there. So I'm just going to trim that now. Hopefully I'm not stuffing anything up. Cool. So I'm just going to trim some of these threads. Okay. So now Now what I am thinking is hmm. I was thinking about I was thinking about shifting this bottom ruffle, shifting it up to meet the bottom edge of the pink and then filling in the gap over this side with these ruffles, but now I'm thinking that I do actually want to keep the majority of the ruffles down here and then just fill in the gaps up evenly on both sides because I don't think I'll have enough to actually properly fill it in, if that makes sense. So trying to keep things uh, symmetrical, I wouldn't want to just bring all of the ruffles up this way and have it very full here and then very sparse ruffles here with whatever ruffles I've got left over. Um, so I'm thinking of splitting that and putting that over here and over there. Um, yeah, let me just quickly play around with my scrap pieces of fabric and figure out what I'm going to do and then I'll come back on camera and actually explain what I'm actually going to do. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. So all I did was chop each of my scrap ruffles in half. So now I've got these two pieces and then the same two pieces over there. And all I'm going to do is the longer of the two is going to go along the bottom edge and then the shorter of the two is just going to go in between to fill in that gap there. So I think that is enough coverage for what I need. Um, so now it is time to actually sew all of these ruffles down. So I think what I'm going to start off by doing is... Um, I'm thinking I'll start with this bottom ruffle and then I'll work my way outwards that way. Or should I do it the opposite direction? It this way. No, I will do it this way. Um, so once I've sewn this first ruffle on, the next ruffle, um, every time I sew on an extra ruffle, all of the ruffles that have already been sewn on will be to the left of the foot of the sewing machine, so it won't get uh, too difficult to do, hopefully. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I also need to finish off um, the raw edges of all of these pieces. I think with um, 
with these these ones here I folded the edges inwards and then top stitched whereas considering how light the poly poplin fabric is I probably could get away with just doing a like just folding it twice and then just top stitching that down rather than doing what I did here but we'll see what I end up doing um, either way it's no big deal so I've taken all of the pleats off the base as you can see and I've just left the two short pieces so one short piece there one short piece there and then the really long bottom ruffle piece so over here I've got all of my ruffles um, they're sorted in order from the top ruffle all the way down to what will be closest to this bottom ruffle and then those two short pieces will be the short pieces that fill in just on either side yeah um, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew down the ruffle I'm probably going to pin this down first just so I don't lose the placement of this um, because I'm quite happy with how that um, the placement of this bottom ruffle so I'll pin that down and then to the sewing machine we go so I'm at the sewing machine now and I've pinned down the whole bottom ruffle um, here you can see the short piece so the short piece finishes here and then you can see the start of the long piece which goes all the way to the other side and then there's another short piece at the other end so before I sew this ruffle down I'm first going to finish off the edges um, so I've just sort of left the edges free hanging so I can actually get around to uh, moving, removing the raw edges. To do that, all I'm going to do is fold it twice. like that it's not very good but it will do and then I'm just going to sew top stitch over that I'm thinking to make this easier for myself I might actually fold it the opposite way so I know where I need to top stitch so I'll just fold it like that that should do it and then just take that to the sewing machine. I'll show you on camera, may as well. So taking that to the sewing machine and I'm just going to do A basic top stitch oh I just realized my stitch tension is still really high there we go And there we go the edge has nicely well <laughs> not very nicely but nice enough has been finished off and the edges won't fray well apart from that little part up the top there but I honestly don't care so I'm just going to do that for all of the short raw edge sections and then I can go ahead and sew the whole ruffle on so I just wanted to show um, that I've finished closing up the raw edges of each of these uh, ruffles um, so you can see that these two meet um, and I've just left them separate I will stitch along the top here and that's where they'll be meeting um, but I won't I can't be bothered like joining them together and I don't think it would serve any like 
purpose if I was to join them. Um, I don't think it defeats like the purpose of what this ruffle is supposed to do by leaving them detached. Um, over here I've got the like just the end of the ruffle. Same goes with wherever the other side went to. Over here. Um, so I'm just going to sew up until that point. Um, so now I'm going to sew all along just beneath the gathering stitches um, with a regular regular stitch and this will secure the ruffle down in place. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now and then that will be the first ruffle on. So like I mentioned before the way that I'll be sewing these ruffles on is by always having the ruffle towards the left of the foot of my sewing machine and then that way um, on this side so towards the the pillar of my sewing machine where there's not really enough room um, it will just be this uh, it will just be this there won't be any ruffles over that side so that's the direction that I'm continuously going to be sewing in um, just to make it easier for myself well I'm hoping it will be easier for myself and I am placing my needle just a little bit beneath the gathering stitches and then I'm just going to sew um, so the way that I'm sewing is literally just sewing over the gathers and taking out the pins as I go. And I'll just do a back stitch at the beginning. And yeah, I'm just going around and sewing all of those gathers down. And this will be the first ruffle. So I'm just going to continue doing that um, and I'll probably just do that off camera. It's going to take a while because it's such a long ruffle. <laughs> okay, so this is not as smooth sailing as I thought it would be. <laughs> I've only sewn this much, this much, and already I've gotten this happening. <laughs> Can you see that? Look at that got that happening over there and I've got it happening again over here and I figured out that this is because there is just so much material here um, and I was skewing it over this way which meant that it kept getting extra fabric caught under the needle which is causing all of this to happen and that's not what I want um, so now I've I've just decided, okay, I'm just going to stop sewing. I am going to seam rip um, along these areas where I've got those um, folds in the fabric sewn down, which I don't want. Um, and I'm just going to leave this for tomorrow because I'm really just not feeling like working on this tonight. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to seam rip it and I will get back to this tomorrow because this is frustrating and there's just so much fabric. <laughs> okay, so I lied. I did end up sewing everything tonight. Um, I'll show you what's behind the sewing machine. That is what's behind the sewing machine. Um, so this, all of this was l basically laying in my lap until I could feed it through the sewing machine and get it out to the other side. So. It's a lot to work with and I am not looking forward to adding the rest of the ruffles on. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can see that my stitching is not very good, but it secures the ruffle to the base of the train, which is what I'm after. And from the outside, this is what it's looking like so far. Um, obviously, um, the ruffle is quite uh, puffy at the bottom, um, but this will flatten out once all the other ruffles, all the other ruffle tiers are added above it, and that will help uh, form the nice um, outwards sort of shape that we're after for the train. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we're at, and I am going to go have dinner. <laughs> but I hope you. Uh, 
understood everything that I was trying to explain. I know that I didn't really film myself doing much. It was more just talking today, but that's how I felt like filming. So yeah, that's it for today. And I have no idea when I will actually get this train ruffle done. <laughs> so it's Monday today and I never ever sew at nighttime really after work, but I've decided that I want to try and do maybe like an hour each night um, so I can progress this along a bit more because every time the weekend comes along I procrastinate. Anyway, um, what I'm going to focus on tonight is uh, closing off all of the raw edges of all of my ruffles um, so that way I can just not worry about having to sew these later on when I go to actually sew the ruffles to the um, to the actual base of the train. So yeah, um, really all of all this involves is if I just move the camera over this way, all this involves, and I'm pretty sure I've already said this before, is I'm just folding over the raw edge twice and then just top stitching that down. So that's effectively a rolled hem. And I am going to do that to all of my ruffles so that they're all ready to go. Ah. And one thing that I hate is that with this poly poplin fabric, it is so lightweight that when I put it close to the edge in my machine, it just eats the fabric and it gets stuck. So I have to keep lifting the foot and then readjusting the placement of the fabric to make sure it doesn't disappear. I might do a little back stitch and then just sew the rest of this down. There we go. And now I'm just going to continue doing that for all of my ruffle pieces. of each of my ruffles so I've got all of my ruffles laid along here and there are no raw edges which is great um, I've also got the base with the first ruffle sewn on um, so it's just been folded up here over the, over the weekend um, so I am going to pull this out and I am going to sew the next ruffle on yeah that's what I'm going to do and I probably won't film me doing it because I'm in my big fluffy robe and I don't look that great, so <laughs> yeah. Actually, I lied. I can film. I'll just film angles which you don't actually see me. Um, I was actually thinking of filming um, like the whole train ruffle and showing you guys how I pin the ruffle the whole, like to the whole thing. Oh, that's a blunt pin. Um, but yeah, I now realize that I can just show you sections. So I'm just showing you this small section. So how I'm doing this is 
I'm laying the ruffle, so hang on, let me bring you closer. So I'm laying the ruffle down so it just covers the top edge of the ruffle beneath it and then pinning, pinning it down and it's as simple as that. Um, and when I'm pinning, I'm pinning so that all my pins are facing downwards so I can easily pull them out as I sew because I'll be sewing with this to the left of the foot and that to the right so I can just pull the pins to the right as I go. Um, the other thing to take note is um, when I am pinning it down I'm making sure that this section of the train is nice and flat so I'm not actually pinning any pleats into the actual base of the train. So yeah, um, so I'm just pinning like roughly a finger length <laughs> um, apart and then I'll go back in and I'll start pinning in between these to make sure that these don't shift around too much. But yeah, that's essentially what I'm doing and I'll just continue doing that now. second ruffle has been pinned down. You can see that all of the pins are facing downwards so I can easily pull them out as I sew along the ruffle and it's overlapping just to cover up this frilly edge of the previous ruffle. Um, they stop about there and same on the other side and then I've got those two small little pieces over there which are going to fill in the gaps over there and there but I probably won't sew them on tonight. I think I'm just going to sew this ruffle and then I'm going to call it a night. So I finished sewing on the second ruffle and I'm hoping that it turned out okay on the back or the front side, the right side, whatever you want to call it, you know, the flat side. That's what I'll call it, the flat side. I'm hoping that I didn't have too much warping of the fabric going on. For the most part, it's quite flat, so I'm quite happy with that. Oh, okay, I think over here there's a little bit of... Oh no, no, it looks okay. It looks relatively flat. So I've just been cutting off the long basting threads as I go, the ones that like are sticking out and really long. So that's all of the threads that I've cut off. Um, I'm going to, it's actually got a really good weight to it, I feel. Um, I can definitely imagine this being on the underside of the train and really helping to hold out the shape. So I'm hoping, hoping this turns out all right. But um, yeah, I was just concerned that I would have some warping of the fabric on the flat side but everything seems to be okay, but we'll see how we go over the next few days as I sew the rest of the ruffles on. So I'm going to call it a night. Um, so throughout the week, hopefully I can get around to sewing the rest of these ruffles on. Um, that would be the goal, is by the end of this week to have the base train ruffle thingy done. And the other thing to mention is I just got my little buttons in the mail today. So these are the buttons that I'm going to use to attach the train ruffle to the actual train. Um, I thought these buttons would be bigger, but I'm hoping these will work. 
but considering how big and heavy the train is, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> like, small buttons, really, really big, massive, heavy train, <laughs> not sure. But we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, I think now that I've got the buttons, that's really helping me to motivate me to um, actually finish this train ruffle because I've been working on this for weeks now. <laughs> so yeah, good night. So it's Tuesday night now and I'm pinning down the third ruffle, as you can see, and I thought I would just um, talk about some of the things that I've found to work well and not work well. So what I've found is what works well is if I lay out the base of the train like so and I just find the center, the middle part of the ruffle and pin that down first like so. And then as I go around and pin along the ruffle, um, what I've found to work is to not stick my hand underneath uh, from this side to get the pin in. Rather, what I do is I literally just take my pin. Actually, I'm just going to get one of these other pins. This should do. Um, and I stick the pin literally into the ground and I am working on a carpeted surface. And I stick it right into the ground and then I poke it back up to not catch the carpet but making sure that I capture the actual base layer. Now the reason I do this is because this actually helps prevent any puckering or warping happen happening on the, on, the on the train base. Um, whereas if I stick my hand under it will start shifting the fabric in ways that I don't want it to go. So that's why I found keeping everything flat on the ground like this and literally sticking the pins into the ground and then poking them back up. So they're not in the ground, but at least they're capturing the base fabric while it's nice and flat. So that's what I found to have worked well and that's something that I'll continue doing for all of the ruffles. Um, and I thought, yeah, I would just tell you guys about it in case you're curious. Which I'm sure you are, because why would you be watching this video then? <laughs>keeping up with my one ruffle per night, my little challenge set for myself. So I've got the fourth ruffle pinned on and now I am going to sew that on and that's it for Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday today. Yes it is. <laughs> yes. It's now Saturday and I've been quite diligent in sewing one ruffle each night throughout this week, which is good. I'm up to the third or second last ruffle, if you will. Um, those are the last ruffles that I've got over there. So just the one pink one, which goes across the top. And then the two short pieces, which I was originally going to use to fill in these gaps here on the side. Um, but now what I've decided is with this white piece, this is actually going to fall across these pieces here like that and then because there's quite a big dip in the middle part here when I put the pink ruffle along the top there is still a little bit of room here left so I'm going to fill in this little gap with those two short pieces and basically I'm just hoping that the pink ruffle will be large enough to cover this area here. There might be a little bit of um, 
like gaps around here um, but they shouldn't be they shouldn't be too bad so that's what I'm thinking I'm going to sew down well first I'm going to pin down this white ruffle um, in this shape then sew it down and then I'll move on to the pink mm. I'll, I'll probably work with the pink ruffle and the two short pieces at the same time to work out how to finish off how the ruffles are going to be on the base of the train and hopefully I can have this done today we'll see now moving on to sewing the last ruffle and I've decided that I'm not actually going to go with putting uh, these short pieces in the middle here underneath this piece um, what I'm going to do is move this basically following my original plan to have this last ruffle along the top so it would go all around around here and then to fill in this gap here I'm going to bring one of these short pieces and fill in that gap I'm sure you can imagine what I'm trying to show here but yeah so that's what the result will be and then for this part around here I have decided I'm probably going to double up the fabric because this is just one layer of cotton one layer of polypoplin fabric and I've also decided that I'm perhaps not going to go with buttons I'm probably going to use those snap popper things and I feel like that would need a bit more stability so I'm thinking of uh, having this doubled over um, and that's why I don't mind that I've got quite a bit of extra fabric here that I can work with to make that happen. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this last ruffle on with those two short pieces inserted at those points over there and then I will explain how I'm going to finish off the top. 